Again, welcome to Python programming language. This is CS625 lecture number one. In this lecture, we are going to list three reasons why Python is a good first language for new programmers. Also, we are going to describe a console program. In this course, we are going to learn how to create a console program and also graphical user interface program. That's a going or Windows program. Also, we are going to explain how Python compiles and runs a program in terms of, again, the source code, bytecode, and virtual machine. It's the same concept as Java programming language. And also, we are going to distinguish between the system software and application software, and also syntax errors and uh, runtime errors. So the main four general purpose programming language are C++, Java, C Sharp, and Python. In this course, we are going to learn Python. And again, if you learn any one of these language, uh, it's very easy to learn the rest because every programming language have three control structures, which we are called the sequential control structure, the selection, and also repetition. And we are going to cover all those three control structures in this course. Also, there are many general purpose programming languages. But again, these four are the major ones. Now, why Python is a great first language, especially for new computer programmers? First, Python is very simple. It has a simple syntax. So it's very easy to read and use than other most uh, languages, especially Python is very close to English language. Also, Python has most of the features of traditional programming languages. Uh, as we mentioned, the three control structures. Also, Python supports object-oriented principles, programming principles. Also, Python supports the development of a wide range of programs, including games, web applications, and system administrations. Uh, because Python have a lot of uh, library files, packages, uh, for games, data analysis, uh, machine learning tasks, etc. Also, Python is used by many successful companies, including Google, IBM, Disney, and EA Games. The reason is Python is uh, open source, which is free, and also you have so many packages. So first, the console application is what we are going to create. The console application is almost like DOS uh, application. This guy we get a brass screen and a test. There's no any graphics, etc. And also we are going to develop graphical user interface applications, which is also called the Boeing. And so this is more traditional applications that we know now. Um, beginning of programming or computing, most applications are console applications uh, somewhere in the 50s, 60s. But today, again, most of our programs uh, or application are either web application or going. In this course, we are not going to create a web applications, but again, we may go through. Normally, web applications make it possible for us to, again, run them in the in a internet or the website. Most websites support web applications. So our pattern compiles and runs source code. And I'll go through this section uh, using my spider or my computer platform. Uh, but first thing we need to know is that we always need the code editor. And uh, for example, a notepad, it's a good editor. We can use it to create a source file. And we save it and make sure when you save again, Python files, the extension will be .py, .py files and that make the file a source for a Python source file. But again, we don't need to use a notepad because we have so many IDE or the IDOS, which is integrated development environment, and the applications that we can use to run our Java source code. It consists of the editor and also the debugging, debugging tools, et cetera, the testing tools. So first, we need an editor, we write our source code, we save it, 
Then we use the Python interpreter to convert it to bytecode. Then we need again the Python virtual machine to convert it to a machine language which the operating system will understood and run the program for us. Again, we are going to do these steps in a few minutes. So this is the procedure. The first step, the programmer uses the test editor or the IDE to enter and edit the source code. Then the programmer saves the source code to a file with a .py, sorry, .py extension. Again, without the extension of the file, the pretty system cannot recognize the file as a Python file. So every Python file, the name must have extension .py. Uh, same as Java, some of us have taken Java already. Java, the extension should be .java or .java. Now, after you write the source code finish and you save it, next we are going to compile it using the Python interpreter. And we shall go through this in a few seconds. The next step now, the bytecode is translated by the Python virtual machine into instructions that can interact with the operating system of the computer. So this is an example of uh, IDOS interactive shell. Uh, when we start, this is Python 3.5 shell. Uh, when we start, we have the prompt, then we can write any code here. So for example, the first code here is a print in Python. Print means you want to print something on your screen. So print is a function or a method. Here we are printing a string. A string always is a symbol, test, words, that is in a double quotation. So you can see we start with double quotation, we end with double quotation. So everything in is a string. So when we run this program, again, after we write the code print hello, our hello out there, you press enter, then it will print it on the screen. So this is hello out there. Another example, we enter eight plus three, uh, sorry, we enter now eight plus five. When I press enter, I'll get 13, or 10 divided by three. When I press enter, I'll get the answer, et cetera. Now, if we make any syntax error, like here, we say print hello out there. You can see that we are getting a syntax error because first, if this is a string, supposed to be in double quotation, and it have to be a string. Now, how to open, close, and restart the shell? So first thing we do is to start the idle. We use the features on our printing system, and that will open it. Also, to close it, we can just click the close button. And to restart it, we can go back to run Python to restart it. Again, I'm going to do this step in a few seconds. The next step is how to use the interactive shell Again, you will see the three right arrows. That will be our prompt. From there, you can enter your instructions. Anytime you need an answer, you press, you press enter to give you the answer. So this example also. But again, I'm going to run uh, in a few seconds. Now, how do we create, open, save, and close our source file? We can use the idle. We click on file menu. Then we follow the instruction from there. We can also switch between source and shell windows. The source windows make it possible to create a source file and you can save it. The shell window is where we do our interaction. So there, the system can act like a calculator as we saw the example. Now how to enter and edit a Python code. We use the editor that come with the IDO or the IDE. And then again, we'll follow the steps soon. So this is an example of a console application that is running on a shell. And how do we compile it? You can click on the run button, or we can use the F5 key on our keyboard. Now, if there's an error, it will tell us. So in this case, we have an error here, tell us invalid sentence. And we may go through this more detail when we do the lab work. Also, a message that displays for a runtime error. 
Yeah, our message it seems like our synthesis is correct. Um, but again, we have a runtime error here, which means, uh, yeah, we have a statement saying that first of all, the location of the file is here, the month equal to year times 12. The year is not defined, which means the year is supposed to be a, a variable. But when you look at our uh, code here, we don't have here uh, year uh, as a variable and assigning a value or anything. So this means we have uh, uh, the year is not defined. It's not defined. So that would be the conclusion of our lectures. But again, before we go, we shall do the hands on very quick. Uh, so, first, I'm going to use, and um, I also I prefer we're going to use the spider and a coder uh, because the reason why it has the editor and also the output on one window is kind of more comfortable to use. But again, it's up to you. I'm going to try both of them. Now, if you want to download a spider, very straightforward, you can go to the Google. For example, I'm going to Google Anacoda download or spider download it that way we can get. So actually I have it a spider Python download and you can go to anacoda.com to download it and follow the instruction to download. And the same thing applies to Python. We also have, uh, if you don't want to use uh, Spider, you can just download the Python also. So you yeah, type Python download. I should get the link to download Python. Normally, the download Python, if you can remember, we can remember it's only python.org org, and that's the website. And now the version is 3.10. At the moment, I'm using, I have that also. So again, you can use an encoder or you can use Python. It's up to you. My version is 3. Point, see. And my version is 3.9. My later, I have the 3.4, uh, which was a long time. And the latest version I have is 3.9. I also have the 3.8. Hopefully when I get chance, I'm going to again get a 3.10. So that's it. We can download uh, python.org, click on the download Python 3.10. And again, I'm going to click on it. And then we follow the instruction from there. And this is the Windows. I'm using Windows if you are using Linus, Mac OS, you have to select which operating system you are using. So first, let's go through the spider. So when I start my spider, I can see I have a previous code here, but let's assume we don't have anything. I'll click on file and click on new. Then from here, we can type in a, in a, a statement we want to type. For example, here, I want to print a string, hello out there, or let's just make it hello. Uh, so when I finish, I'll just press enter and I can keep entry as much code as I want. Then I'll create file. Then I'll click save us or save. This is the first time I'm saving it. The only to remember the extension should be .py, very important. And I'm saving it on my desktop, I click save. Then from here I can run it. So we have the run button which is the green button here. Or you can go to the menu, the steps on the, uh, the PowerPoint slide set, we should click on run, then run module or just run. <clears throat> then on the lower right side, I can see my output here. <coughs> Excuse me. So my output is hello. So the same thing also, we can use the Python. So let's try the Python also. Uh, 
So this is Python. Again, the same process. I'll click on file, new. If I want to create it, then we can type whatever. Again, here I'm just writing only one, st one statement to print u, u, u. Then I'll create file, save us, or save. And I'm going to save it on my desktop again. And the extension again is .py. Then I can click on run, then run module. And we'll see the output. So the output is u, u, u. So either one will work, either you use the Python or you use the spider and the coder, it's up to you. So this will be the, again, the conclusion of our lectures. Uh, this is our first lectures. The main goal of these lectures is to again, go through what is a Python, how we can download Python program, how we run Python code, and the advantages of Python and what Python means. So again, see you in the next lectures, which again, we're going to start the course itself.